to listen to my friend Renato here who will no doubt share some wisdom with us but before we do that we just want to welcome you remind you that this is your place too and that we would love to have you here whenever you can come um, and as you know we start a meeting with a little reading from Happy Life which is a wonderful little book um, that if you with little messages if you if you're interested we have some here that you can borrow or buy as well so we'll read this we'll do a little prayer and then I'll pass it over to Renato, yeah? Chapter 21. Love is the tonic of life. When centered on sex and the lower passions, it becomes a prison and no longer the uplifting, dignifying, <coughs> liberating sentiment that it really is. Examine your sentiments regarding love to see if they bring you peace or disharmony. By their nature, you will know if you actually love or merely desire. True love overcomes selfishness and always works on behalf of the loved one. Therefore, love without enslaving those to whom you are devoted or becoming enslaved to them. Always a great check. So I would be honored if you join me in taking a deep breath, feeling comfortable raising our thoughts together to our Creator in gratitude for another week that we have together where we get to practice love love not only for those that we are close to and our families and who are dear to our heart but love to ourselves as well when we take the time <coughs> to balance our thoughts and emotions we take time to reflect on our wishes and desires and to measure whether the things that we are doing are the things that we think we ought to do. And love too towards others with kindness in our hearts and our words and our actions and our day-to-day -day activities when we have a little bit more patience towards those things or those people that sometimes may set us off. So thank you, God, for giving us every single day, every new day, so that we can continue to practice love so that you may set us free. For all that we have, we thank you, God, so beautifully. So thank you very much, and I give you a to And I'd like to extend uh, the welcome to everyone here, but everybody that will be joining me through media. And also, we welcome the, all the spirits that they come and sit down here with us and listen to today's topic. And today's topic <clears throat> says, if any come to me and do not hate their own father and mother. And I read the passage. He says, Now great crowds accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, and wife, and children, and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my, uh, uh, my disciple. Whoever does not hear his own cross, whoever does not bear his own, own cross, and come after me cannot be my disciple. So therefore, any, of, any one of you who does not renounce all that he, he has, 
cannot be my, disi my disciple. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And the scriptures on, uh, on the Bible, uh, there's just a small fraction of uh, longer tales. Obviously, everything that Jesus did in his life, uh, passing through this planet, not everything got recorded. I'm very sure of he did so many more things, but they all they wrote, in the, it's written in the Bible, actually, uh, is something that they could capture at that time. And it's just a short version of what he did, because actually he had, uh, uh, he had done some, so much more. And uh, having, having been written after his death, since no gospel was written during his lifetime, it is possible to believe that, in this case, the gist of this thought was not, the, was not properly conveyed, or, which is not less probable, probable, the original meaning of the words may have undergone some alterations in passing from one language to another. And this is very important for us to know because it is very difficult to not only to translate but to interpret the original uh, thought that had to be conveyed to people and written in a different language. For an instance, if I give you an example, if I say a joke in Spanish, and I try to say it in English, it doesn't work. So how is this possible? So we do have to really take uh, uh, care when we read uh, the scriptures because we cannot take the scriptures literally. And I confess, I used to do that before. And my... Uh, brothers and sisters from my church, they completely take it every single passage or every single word literal, literal. And it doesn't work, like the joke that I was trying to, <clears throat> the example of the joke. Um, if we take the original scripture, if it's written in Hebrew, well, I have something to say about that language. It says the Hebrew, Hebrew language was not as rich as other languages and had many words with several different meanings. Such is, for example, the word that is in Genesis designates the phases of creation and use both to express any period of time in a diurnal revolution. This is also what happened to the word that meant both camel and cable. Because cables were made of camel hair, which was translated as a cam uh, camel, the animal, in the allegory of the eye of a needle. So it doesn't make sense to see in this passage that Jesus said that it is, it's a lot easier to pass a camel through uh, an eye of a needle than a rich man to go to heaven. And uh, uh, <clears throat> there's some people that have argued with me. Well, it says here, it says exactly, the scripture says camel. And camel is an animal. I said, yeah, of course. It does say exactly camel. But the meaning of the word camel, it's also referred to the hair of a camel is used in, in that time to make cables or make threads. And uh, the camel's hair being so thick 
when they do that cable is so thick in composition, if you try to pass it through a needle, it's going to be difficult. But it's more, much easier to interpret a cable made out from a camel's hair than actually getting the animal passed through a needle. So interpretations, they can vary tremendously. So we have to be always with an open mind and trying to not only see what it says in just one, two, or three sentences in the scriptures, but we need to take the whole picture. We need to imagine the whole picture. When Jesus was uh, uh, <clears throat> walking down with a crowd and uh, a lady, he, she was, because of her faith that she had, she knew that she, if she touched uh, Jesus' garment, she will be healed. So I'm not only saying that she came and just easily came to Jesus and touched his garment and, and she left and boom, was, killed, was uh, uh, cured. There's a whole picture. I mean, I imagine thousands of people around Jesus because he was so popular. And I'm imagining her struggling through people going, pushing and shoving, trying to get to Jesus until she finally came and was able to touch him. But it, uh, it's interesting for me to know that Jesus stopped and asked his disciples, he says, somebody touch me. And they say, well, Master, look at all these people around, in, around us. They're all touching and rubbing you. But he said, wisely, he said, I know somebody touched me because energy came out from me. So he knew. He knew everything. And it was amazing because we call them miracles. For Jesus is just a regular thing to do to do what he had done because of his spirituality and his higher level of knowledge. We are so, we are living in a planet that's still very low in knowledge, very low in love content. We just heard the passage, passage about love. And love, my friends, is the best medicine to anyone with any kind of sickness. You can easily sense when someone comes and attacks you with, with hate, and someone that, come, that comes and, and give you a hug with love and with understanding. It's a two different meanings. We can easily separate both one from another. But love is a special tool that we have that has been provided for us in order for, uh, to, to show the respect to God when we share that love to others. And I'm talking about every single person in this creation. Uh, <clears throat> it's so interesting for me to understand in this in this uh, particular topic, the word hate. For us, it might be something very hard or harsh to experience, to experience hate. But do you guys believe that in the words of Jesus, he is using the word hate? knowing that his superiority is so great that this type of words he may not even pronounce at all because he's all love to us. What it is is that I learned uh, that hate is not really to cause harm to someone, but it's just to show to love less which is a little bit more subtle to understand. 
If I said to Anisio, for example, I come this morning and I said, Anisio, I hate you. He might go, what? Well, I'm just saying that I love you a little bit less this morning because you asked me or you <clears throat> you're coming to hear my talk today. So words, they have different meanings, really. But we have to be very careful how we use the, the meaning of our words when we try to convey a message to someone. First, we need to know <clears throat> and uh, take care of the tone of, of our voice, the disposition of the words that we're using to convey to people. Because we learned last week that our tongue can be very and devastating um, arm to hurt someone. And perhaps if, if some, we uh, get a gun and shoot someone, we'll create pain for a certain, uh, uh, certain time if it is not in a vital uh, uh, organ. But with time will pass away. Well, when we offend someone with our uh, verbal communication, it may take a long time for them to heal from that wound. So we got to be very careful. And that's what is, they're calling us on this, in this topic today, that we have to be careful how we use the words. Not to take the, uh, the passages and the words literally, but we need to use common sense. Always. I remember that uh, uh, I learned uh, in my church that we have the agency to be offended or not. If someone comes to me, and one of the sisters I remember, <clears throat> she was talking to people in my church about me stealing <clears throat> the, the tithing of the, that we collect in our church. But if I was before and I didn't have the, the satisfaction and the faith that I have, I would get offended. But I know for sure that I wasn't doing that, what she was saying. She is mis misinterpreting my, my uh, way of living, which when you're called to serve, you get blessings. And since I was serving my church at that time, I was receiving blessings. And some of them, they were monetary blessings. And she interpreted those uh, monetary blessings like I was taking the money from the church, which I wasn't. But it's up to me if I get offended or not. When we are uh, right, Especially me, I don't argue with people. If I know that I that I that I have the truth, and then you start telling me that I'm this and uh, 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 that I'm crazy, that I'm totally different than uh, what they were expecting, we'll we'll never gonna please people. We're never gonna act the way they want us to act. They're expecting us to follow certain rules. For instance, I heard uh, uh, someone say, well, that brother, he is not worthy of taking the sacrament this morning because he's doing this and doing that. But I said, who is she or who are we that we uh, have the uh, capable to judge somebody else's uh, behavior? So we have to be very careful. Sometimes we want to do Jesus' work and start telling people, well, you don't supposed to do this. You don't supposed to do that. But do we know exactly the whole picture why that people, they're behaving? I remember one of my friends that uh, when I uh, went to the first year of medical school, 
the, now, you know, after 50 years or more of knowing one another, um, we're best friends. But he, he told me back then, about 50 years ago, when we started uh, going to <clears throat> the medical school, he says, you know, I really hated you when I met you. And at that time, I didn't understand why he was telling me that. And I was very happy. I'm always happy. I get happy when people, they tell me my mistakes, when they criticize me, because I learn from that. Because maybe my way of conducting myself in, uh, uh, in the society may not be the right one. And I need to know that because I'm thinking I'm doing the best thing or behaving the best thing I can be, but I'm not. But I cannot see that myself until I, somebody else tells me the way I, I behave, in which I, de, I do really great appreciate when they say, uh, Brother Segura, you're doing this, doing that. I don't pay attention when they said, you're doing very good. That doesn't mean anything to me. I want to know when, what I'm doing wrong. And that's exactly why I need to really be careful what, the way I behave because we have to teach by the example, not only by saying things. If we know that we are programmed since the beginning of we have to be progressing intellectually, morally, and spiritually. Those are the three bases of us to conquer happiness. Because I heard the expression uh, a lot in my church, I says, well, if you're good, you're gonna go to heaven. What, what does that mean? And I look at the heaven and I don't see anything. What do they mean by that word? Or if you misbehave, you're going to be going to hell. Well, where is the hell? So I wanted to know. So I can know what, ex what I'm expecting to find. Then I start learning and receiving inspiration. What really is heaven? And what really is to get closer to Jesus and to our Creator? is the fact that we're receiving and acquiring real happiness. That's what is going to make us to feel great. I know with this gross uh, coating that we have that we call flesh, that we're carrying with, with difficult. We're literally dragging ourselves on the earth, on the surface of the earth, to move. It's difficult. We get weather problems. We get sicknesses, pandemics, uh, uh, sicknesses, allergies. So many things that, do, that we suffer. But that's exactly what it's our mission to come and encounter trials in order for, our, for us to learn from those trials, to learn from our mistakes, to learn from other people that they have <clears throat> had experiences like us before. The good thing is the scale goes up and we're on the climbing ladder to reach a certain point of happiness. But now, it is now the time that we start really uh, pointing our scale directly to Jesus. We know for a fact that we're in the, in the, in the right path of happiness. Do you think that Jesus was very happy to come to the earth and teach us and show us love, how he cured people, 
how he restored vision in, in blind people. There's this passage that they brought him uh, a sick person. Uh, I think it was a paralytic uh, person that he couldn't move. They brought him in a, like a gurney type thing. And uh, there was so much crowd in the house where Jesus was. Well, they, they got smart and they made an opening on the roof. And from the roof, they dropped that body so he can be close to Jesus. And Jesus saw their faith going through all that in order for them to, to get a brother healthy. Obviously, Jesus Christ, he, he knew that, and sure enough, he cured that person. That was his, one of his major things and I think I, re I said that before, that Jesus came to the earth to, <clears throat> to teach. He came to love and also to serve. And he, if he says today to us, come and follow me, that means do these things that I did. He shows the way, the perfect way for us to come happier. Keep serving, keep loving, keep teaching. That is, that is the main goal. And forget about words like hate. Let's just not love less, uh, not love less, but let's just love, fully love to people. Um, it is my pleasure to be able to help someone in distress both ways, medically and spiritually. And it, that's a great advantage for us. Medically, I may have to be, he have to be present in front of me in order for me to assess that person. But spiritually, from here I can send a special vibration called a prayer for him in order for him to be better. And it, both ways it works. So it is my my prayer today that we can continue loving, serving, and teaching. And I share these things, my friends, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.